Hi, welcome to your body, mind, and home. This is Meditation for Beginners. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, what meditation is, how to do it, two specific types of meditation, um, when to do it, where to do it, how often, how long, and a little bit about what you might expect to uh, experience from consistent meditation. So let's start with what is meditation. So what is meditation? It's basically a technique to rest your mind. And uh, you're probably wondering what's the difference between sleeping and meditating, uh, you know, as far as what it does for your mind. So sleep, you know, obviously is extremely important to um, a healthy brain and a healthy mind, but um, during sleep, a lot is going on. So it's really only in deep sleep that you get uh, a really, you know, rest for your mind. And it does, meditation puts you in a slightly different state uh, than uh, deep sleep, but it is similar. So it has similar benefits, but also additional benefits. So I'm going to talk uh, about two types of meditation that I think are really accessible for beginners. The first is guided meditation. So it's very easy. You just uh, look up guided meditations. You uh, focus on the meditation for however long it lasts, and that's pretty much it. Uh, what I would say with, about guided meditations is that uh, you're probably going to use them on your phone. So you want to make sure that you have uh, guided meditations picked out, bookmarked, and ready to go so that you don't get distracted by doing other things on your phone. I would really recommend that you open your phone, you go directly, don't even look at notifications or you know anything like that, uh, texts, anything. Just go directly to your meditation and start your meditation. You can do all those other things uh, later. Um, so the other type of meditation is the type that I do, and um, that's a mantra meditation. So you can find mantras by Googling TM mantras. They have a whole list of them. That's why I mentioned them, because um, they, they have a whole list of mantras, and you can pick one. They're, they're by age, but you know, I'm not sure that you really need to pay attention to that. Just uh, pick a mantra and stick with it. Because one thing that the, the mantra will do is sort of imprint on your mind that this is where you're going into a meditative state. So you want to stick with the same mantra uh, so that that can help you uh, come into the meditative state. And when you use a mantra, uh, the first time, I would suggest that you do it out loud. And I'm just going to show you what I mean. So you're going to close your eyes and just, just start speaking it out loud. Shiam, 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 Shiam. Just like that. Um, and do it for about three minutes uh, like that, and then maybe five minutes, uh, a good long time, and then start uh, making it softer and softer and softer till you're whispering, till you're just moving your lips. And then uh, from then on, it's internal. And you won't be speaking it aloud again. You'll, you'll just be doing it um, in your mind. So um, with any type of meditation, one of the things that's going to happen is your mind is going to wander. And that is perfectly normal. When that happens, um, I just suggest that you allow your mind to come back to the meditation. And the, the reason I say it that way is because there's a part of your mind that does want to come back to the meditation. There may be a part of your mind that wants to stay on whatever you were thinking about. Um, but allow your mind to return to the meditation, whatever type of meditation you're doing. That can happen two times, it can happen 20 times, 50 times. Um, it, you know, it's all good. So there isn't any, um, it, 
it's always effective as long as you just follow the guidance of going back to focusing on the meditation whenever you realize that you're not that you're not doing it that you're not um, focused on the meditation and you know those places that you go aren't necessary you know sometimes they're good places sometimes you're deep into the meditation sometimes you're uh, off thinking about you know chores or some issue that uh, you're you have in your life so um, either way just go go back to the meditation and as long as you do that you're doing it right um, it might you will feel differently uh, at the ends of different meditations or even during meditations how you feel isn't indicative of how how effective the meditation is so just know that um, as long as you're doing it you're getting the benefit um, I, I have a couple of techniques that I use to um, help me with meditation. One of them is that, and this is probably kind of unusual, but I, I sometimes, you know, am so busy doing that I am not feeling. Sometimes I'm, especially if it's if there's feelings that um, you know are uncomfortable for me or or unpleasant, uh, I may be suppressing them a little bit. So one of the things that I do is I just look at my body, basically from here to my uh, solar plexus, just to see if there's anything that um, is being held, even the back of my neck. Um, and if I notice that, uh, then I just feel the feeling. And what I'm talking about here is primary feelings. So I just want to... Uh, distinguish anger uh, as not being a primary feeling. So if you have anger, um, usually that's a cover for something that makes you feel more vul vulnerable. So it's more, um, you know, it can cover up uh, shame or um, sorrow, grief, fear, um, things like that. So what I want is the feeling underneath it and not any thoughts associated with it. So you're not thinking about um, what it is that is making you feel that way. There's no thoughts. It's just the physical feeling of, re you know, feeling that feeling as it's leaving you uh, so that you can then go into the meditation and not feel like you're trying to push that feeling away, you know, during the meditation. The other thing for me is that I think a lot, uh, obviously. Um, I have a very busy brain, and so when I meditate, uh, one of the techniques that I use is um, either an imaginary box next to me, or I'll use a post-it note. And just write down some things before the meditation. If there's something I'm really um, bothered about or really thinking about, I write it down or I put it in the box as a means of saying, okay, I'm going to revisit that after the meditation. But for now, that, that whole topic is aside. Um, another thing that happens to me while I'm meditating is I will come up with, you know, some, you know, amazing thought or, or remember something that I have to do. And, uh, you know, I don't, don't want to forget it. So, I will use that post-it note mentally. So I'm not actually writing on the post-it note, but I'm thinking, I, I, I imagine myself writing it on the post-it note, uh, specifically starting with the capital letter, because that seems to help me um, remember it. And then I put it aside and I go back to the meditation. And you'd be surprised how effective that is. So when I'm done with the meditation, you know, I imagine looking at the post-it note and seeing the word that I wrote on it, just a word or two, and then, then I remember what it is that I didn't want to forget. So uh, let's talk about where to do meditation. So um, you want to want someplace quiet um, and dim, dimly lit. Uh, if possible. It's not always possible, but um, that's, especially when you're beginning, it's, it's, you know, pretty important to have. And you want to be sitting up. So you want to be holding your head. Part of that uh, is that you don't want to fall asleep. So a, um, a recliner 
isn't the best place because you don't want meditation to be associated with sleeping. And when you're sitting up and have your eyes closed, there aren't too many other things you're ever going to be doing in that position. So again, it's a cue to your mind to say, okay, we're going into meditation. I have this uh, little chair that I bought that was a, a splurge, uh, but you can do any chair, any chair that's comfortable. I wanted something in my bedroom and I didn't have uh, room for a big chair. And uh, I just, I wanted to buy this as sort of a commitment to my meditation because I had sort of fallen off of it for a while. This is a seagrass meditation and yoga chair. Um, and I got it because I have back issues, so it's very comfortable. Sometimes I meditate right in bed um, because, especially if it's cold, and uh, I, you know, cold, warmth is more important to me and, you know, my comfort than anything. So I will sometimes meditate sitting up in bed, but it's really not that good for my back. And so if I, you know, can, can bear to get out of bed at all, that's what I do is I come and sit in this chair. Now, uh, when should you meditate? And uh, what I would suggest very strongly is that you meditate first thing in the morning before you do anything. So the only thing that I'll do uh, before I meditate is go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's the only thing I, I'll do. And that way, you know, your mind is in a good place because it's not, not too busy yet. It's not distracted. If I leave the room, I'm, you know, I'm going to get distracted and start doing things and, and maybe never meditate. So I try to do it first thing in the morning before I do anything else. And that way it also doesn't get shortchanged. So my workout might get shortchanged or I might be late for work, um, you know, or late for, you know, doing something. But the thing that's not going to suffer is my meditation. Um, how often to meditate? So currently I'm meditating once a day, but um, I used to meditate twice a day and twice a day is very, very effective. If you do a second meditation, I would do it late in the afternoon before you eat um, because you don't want to be, uh, your body doesn't want to be um, digesting food while you're trying to meditate. And also you don't want to get too close to bedtime because uh, it can make it harder to go to sleep because it's a very restful thing to begin with. Uh, meditation will help you with your sleep. Meditation will give you a better, a better sleep and you might not even need as much sleep if you meditate once or twice a day. So how long should you meditate? I would say a good goal is 20 to 30 minutes each time. And that will definitely get you the benefits that I'm going to talk about uh, towards the end of this video. Um, if you can't do 20 minutes, uh, I would say you could start with 10 minutes. What, what's important is um, doing it consistently and making the commitment to yourself to do that. And if you uh, make a commitment and you don't keep it, there's a part of you that learns not to trust yourself. So I would say go with uh, an amount that you can commit to uh, on a regular basis for at least a month. And, um, you know, you can go over what you commit to, but I wouldn't go under what you commit to. And as far as timing, I would recommend not using um, uh, any kind of alarm for it. Um, and that's because there's, you might be in a place that's a good place towards the end of your meditation and uh, you don't want to interrupt that abruptly with an alarm. The only time I will use an alarm is when I absolutely only have, you know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes uh, for my meditation. And I'm, you know, I absolutely, it's an absolute cutoff point. Something is depending on, on that. So I do make, you know, the, the exception, you know, every once in a while, but it really has to be something where I can't go even a minute over. Let's just talk now about, um, about what the effects of meditation are. So 
when I first started meditating, I was 19, and uh, about two weeks after I started meditating, I had a registration at school. So registration in those days was thousands of people in a huge auditorium. You had to wait in big, long lines. <clears throat> and as happened, you know, normally, I got to the front of the line that I had been in for maybe a half an hour and found out that I was in the wrong line. So I went to the, the other line and I, I stood there and I thought, wait, something just happened. Like, what happened? And what happened was I didn't feel... I didn't get mad at the person that told me this. I didn't swear under my breath. I wasn't, I wasn't all, you know, beaten down or feeling stupid or any of those things that I would normally be feeling. I just went and got in the other line. And the reason I tell you this is because the, the effects of meditation are not so much active feelings. They're sometimes just the absence of something. So, you know, you, you may be disappointed to find out this, but uh, meditation doesn't give you like a, you know, really, you know, calm experience. It's not like you took a couple Valiums. It's not like, um, you know, it's, it's not an active feeling. It's a, it's a subtle, very subtle effect, but, but it helps you think better. It helps you uh, not react to things that, um, you know, and maybe get to think about things before you react. It just can have very subtle, subtle uh, effects. So um, when it comes to guided meditation, sometimes there are meditations with specific purposes in mind. I would stay with the neutral meditations because, uh, you know, um, meditation seems to have an effect on whatever, whatever areas of your life you're trying to work on. So you don't need anything specific. Uh, just doing consistent meditation will have an effect on a lot of things. Um, a couple of years ago, maybe five years ago, my husband lost 65 pounds. And everybody would ask him, do you feel, you know, how, how do you feel? Do you feel energetic? Do you feel like you've got more energy? And he would always say, no, you know, I feel pretty much the same. And that's a similar thing to what, uh, what you may experience with, um, with meditation. So I noticed that he had less fatigue, that he just tended to be more ready to do things and was up and about more. So I tell you this because sometimes the effects of meditation will be seen more by people you know than, than you will notice. So, so take notice if somebody mentions something to you about uh, about noticing something different uh, in your behavior or in your reactions or whatever. So that's about it. Um, if you, uh, I would love it if you would uh, like or and subscribe to my channel. And um, any comments or questions are are very welcome. If you're uh, into ideas about uh, relaxation, I do have a. a a video on receiving massage. So if you'd like to check that out, please do. If you've never had a massage or if you have massage and you uh, think you might not be doing it right or, um, or you want to just make sure that you're getting as much out of it as you can, uh, you might want to check out that video. So thanks a lot and uh, have a good one.